America has such a rich crop of legendary designers and one of them is Bob Mackey. So this week's episode is about Bob Mackey and his incredible 50 years, 50 plus years in the costume and fashion industry. You know, a lot of people realize that there is definitely a confluence between the impact that costume designers have on fashions today. And Bob Mackey really impacted fashion in a huge way because he was bold and uh, he had the muses that were willing to, to, to go for it. There are not a lot of designers that can say that they have a list of awards that have been either nominated or given to him. He is definitely feted both in the fashion world and in the costume world. His career b began in 1961 and he was really in high demand because his illustrations were so great. And we actually have the pleasure and gift of being able to go to Julian's auction to be able to see some of the illustrations that have been up for auction. Incredible. We have a chance to actually see and hold many of Bob Mackey's original drawings. And from what I understand, we're going to see not only Cher, but um, Madonna and Elton John and a few other people as well. So here we go. Oh my God. I can't believe we are in the warehouse of Julian's auction and they're having um, an auction of Bob Mackey's illustrations. They have been kind enough to pull out over a dozen illustrations for us to share with you. And speaking of share, um, we're going to start with the first illustrations that he pulled out. My heart is really beating fast because to have my hands on an original Bob Mackey illustration for Cher, I mean, he does his own illustrations. In this day and age, a lot of the costume designers um, hire illustrators, but he does his own work, which, I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Because of his long collaboration and designing for Cher, they were kind enough to take out seven illustrations um, that Mackie did for her. Um, and I'm just gonna expose them. And I'm not familiar with which productions or which, um, except for one coming up. I mean, oh my God, can we talk about iconic share? And <laughs> this, it's so great. Oh my, I just, I can't believe I'm actually here. And then we have the illustrations for her song, Half Breed. How incredibly beautiful. And you know, the thing that I find so fasc fascinating is you can actually go online and place your bids prior to the actual auction date. Uh, they had an earlier auction of Bob Mackey illustrations, which did extremely well. Some of the pieces sold for many thousands of dollars. And, you know, this is uh, fashion history, uh, pop culture history, and um, they're just beautiful works of art. The creative director for Gucci was totally inspired by uh, Bob Mackey's illustrations for Elton John. So we've had the pleasure of having three of Mackey's illustrations for Elton John. I mean, <laughs> ah, oh my God. And this, which is so great. Um, and then, are you ready for this? In 1991, Madonna had uh, Bob Mackie design 
the gown that she wore to the Academy Awards. And this is his illustration of that gown. She wanted to emulate Marilyn Monroe. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job. And then we have one illustration he did of a wardrobe for Barbara Streisand. And one of my favorites growing up as a child, Carol Channing. If I can get the protective paper open. And then this one is dated 1978 for Diane Car Carroll. All breathtaking, sexy, feminine, glamorous. I mean, what other adjective can we add to Mackie's incredible gift for designing? For all the auction houses that exist in the United States, I don't think anyone can really compare to the types of material that Julian's has been carrying and selling for well over a decade. I mean, just looking at these catalogs that are on their bookshelves, uh, they carry all of the rock and roll greats. Anyway, lots to look at, and um, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this episode because there's a lot of really um, amazing things, and we are really privileged to be here to look at these things firsthand. When you think of Bob Mackie, you think of Carol Burnett, you think of Cher, and um, he began in 61 and he started uh, doing illustrations for Edith Head. And from Edith Head, he also designed around the same time for Jean-Louis, but he preferred working for Edith Head for numerous reasons. I think she gave him more leeway. Uh, she saw that he was extremely creative and uh, let him basically go with it. I didn't know this, but Bob Mackey did the illustration for the Happy Birthday Mr. President dress for um, John Kennedy's birthday. Around 1966, Mitzi Gaynor uh, was so impressed by him, she uh, tagged him to do her entire wardrobe for her stage performance. And what was great was it allowed him to exercise his design capabilities for movement. She, she danced, she sang, and so um, he had to come up with uh, the logistics of being able to move freely uh, in some of the glamorous and outrageous costumes he created. Uh, because of the Mitzi Gaynor performance, Carol Burnett actually saw him uh, with her husband, who was her producer, and she approached him to be the costume designer for her TV show. And that's legendary. I mean, so many costumes that she wore during her 11-year span are iconic, and you really can't think about Bob Mackie without thinking of the Gone with the Wind uh, episode. Mackie made his name really known by being the designer for variety television. He also did uh, Sonny and Cher variety show, and he transformed their images. His collaboration with Cher is historic. She was brave and uh, she, I mean, Mackie had the perfect muse because her body was so perfect to be able to create these wonderful uh, creations. Many of you r can remember the 1986 presentation to Donna Michi for Best Supporting Actor, I believe. And uh, between her gown and her headdress, she, I, Amici is quoted as saying he's never been photographed more in his entire life, uh, recognizing that it wasn't for him, but because of, of Cher's outrageous wardrobe. Uh, there's a great quote from him. Um, he, he creates pieces that are uh, seemingly transparent. He uses um, a, fa a silk fabric that is like a really lightweight mesh. I believe it's called souffle. And um, it's what some people in the industry call naked dressing. So, um, but his famous quote that his, he says is that his clothes are, quote, for the woman who is not afraid to be noticed. And I'd have to say with the share gown, he's definitely not exaggerating. Um, 
I do need to mention that at some point in his career, he met the love of his life, Ray Agion, um, and the two of them formed this incredible partnership. Um, and, and actually, there was a third person involved, which was brought in. Um, they were asked to create Judy Garland's wardrobe for her variety show, and uh, Bob Mackey recognized that the quality of work that needed to be done, the workshops, uh, one of them was called Elizabeth Courtney. And so um, Elizabeth Courtney and Mackie and Agion cre were part of Elizabeth Courtney costumes. Oftentimes when you see pieces that were built in their studio, it'll have the Elizabeth Courtney label. The Bob Mackie later is later on when he started doing Ready to Wear. Um, Elizabeth Courtney passed away in 1974, and they continued to use that name and that label. And actually, there was a second incarnation, which the label says EC2, the number two. So if you're out there digging and looking for treasures, don't pass those up, because you, you may not realize that you're passing up an original Mackey. Um, in 1982, Mackie started the Ready to Wear collection and also the uh, Barbie doll uh, collectible dolls. And um, he really began to brand his name. The segue that Mackie took from costumes into Ready to Wear, I mean, he never stopped doing costumes, but getting into uh, selling to the public was not an easy one because Seventh Avenue was less than welcoming. Uh, they had almost a patronizing uh, attitude towards the Hollywood guys making it into, uh, into the department stores. And I guess part of it was competition because he already had name recognition. But it's, it's interesting how everything we do in the past leads us to where we are today and in many cases prepares us for the next step. So. If you think about a lot of the fashions from the 1980s, there was a lot of beaded, heavily beaded garments that came in from mostly India. And the styles were not really glamorous. They were really made for um, a lot of people who were trying to hide their bumps and curves. But Mackie went the other direction. He infused what he learned working with Jean-Louis, uh, and to some degree Edith Head into creating glamour with these beautiful gowns. And he was a big seller. His creations were valued, and they still are today. So you see his genius in um, cashing in on his notoriety. And, you know, there are so many people in the industry who just say the kindest things about him. It's really unusual when you have a high-pressure, um, time-oriented business. Everybody, from Bette Midler to Barbara Streisand, they all have nothing but kind things to say about him. And it's great that he has figured out, as an artist, other ways to capitalize on that. But beyond that, it's 50 years since he started, over 50 years since he started his career, he's still relevant. I mean, think about the uh, Metropolitan Museum Costume Institute's theme of 2019 was camp. And a lot of attention was brought back to Bob Mackey because so many of the pieces that he made, I mean, if you look at the pictures of people and what they wore to that event, so much of it was inspired by Bob Mackey. Other designers that are inspired by him today are like Alessandro Michel of Gucci, who did a whole collection revolving around Elton John and Mackey's collaboration. Such a great example of, or examples of Bob Mackey's work. None of them are really technically on souffle. They're more on a light stretch mesh. But what's so brilliant about his design is he clearly understands the female form. Uh, lots of beading, some uh, crystal incrustation, this faux necklace, which is really elaborate on this beautiful piece. Um, and once you put it on, they're pretty heavy, but once you put it on, you don't feel the weight because it 
gets evenly distributed throughout the body. And uh, they're super sexy because they really are body con. Um, a couple of these pieces actually came from the 1970s, 80s icon Morgan Fairchild. And um, most of these are 1980s. We have uh, two pieces that are more from the 1970s. This fabulous moon, crescent moon and star gown and the cut velvet with the crystals that are embroidered. Um, and I don't believe we have any Elizabeth Courtney. Oh, no, we have, forgive me. We have an Elizabeth the First label, and it says both Ray and Bob on the label. So that's a good one. Um, but I want to look through my notes because I know, I mean, after 50 years, there's so much to talk about. Uh, they, um, music, FIT did um, uh, an exhibition in 99 to honor his enormous contribution to fashion and costume design with an actual retrospective. And this year, 2019, he was awarded the Jeffrey Bean CFDA Lifetime Achievement Award. What I find really um, amusing is that the CFDA made up an award for him because the category that they wanted to give him wasn't really relevant. So the award they, they made up is called the Exuberance Award. That's, uh, <laughs> that's such a great thing. The beauty of Mackey's design is he understands movement. So for the stage, for real life, these things were created with practical uh, openings. Uh, for Carol Burnett, the costumes had to basically be ripped off so that they could do quick changes. Uh, he, he got the logistics down. And um, RuPaul said, when I think of Bob Mackey, I think of beating and proportions and colors and vibrancy and cinematic. He is really the heir apparent of the glamorous Hollywood aesthetic, you know, the Busby, uh, Busby Berkeley musicals and the great designers from films and theater. So this week's show-offs are in theme with Bob Mackey, which beads, beads, and more beads, uh, are these necklaces, um, also referred to as satoirs, S-A-U-T-O-I-R-S. Um, in fact, this is the only one that's a true satoir because uh, they were popular in the late Victorian Edwardian period. They're a necklace that has, that uh, ties and has uh, fringe. So although all of these have fringes, they're not tieable. But what I love about these are they are works of art. Um, between using uh, iridescent beads, which some people call carnival glass, to the beadwork, these are cut steel, and happily none of it is tarnished. Um, and the images that are actually beaded on the inside are fantastic. And then this one, which has the 1920s plastic, which is celluloid. And uh, yeah, I mean, you think about flapper girls, and fringe was very much a part of the flapper period. So these necklaces would have been worn in the 1920s. This one might have been worn in the teens because it has an older feel to it. So see you in a couple weeks and Happy New Year. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll get notified when we post our next episode. That's it for now. Bye.